All right, everyone, we start off today with another typical Republican Party moment. Uh, the Republican Party is fond of losing. It's not fond of winning. Even when it's clear-cut that they have the ability to do basically whatever the fuck they want, somehow they manage not to do anything. Uh, they obstruct themselves more often than they obstruct anything else, which has become a real problem. The Unipartyist Republicans have joined with the Democrats to block the censoring of Adam Schiff now. And this is entirely predicated on Orange Man Bad. If you look down the list of names, the reasons given for not censoring Adam, Adam Schiff, and especially, as I pointed out yesterday, from Thomas Massey. Now, Thomas Massey has some redeeming qualities, so at the very least we'll give him that. But he has Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, he was the first person of any profile to endorse DeSantis, so it makes sense that he would vote against this because the reason that Schiff was going to be censured is for flat out, straight up, objectively and observably lying to the American public for a protracted period of time and misusing his particular uh, congressional power. Well, if you do that, it makes the Republican Party look like it's united behind Big Don, it's defending Orange Man. You don't want to do uh, that, do you? Because you like a different candidate. So you invoke the 8th and 27th Amendments as a confused, prattling reason why you couldn't vote in favor of this. Well, let's look at the amendments, shall we? The 27th Amendment has to do with congressional salaries and shit like that. I don't understand how it's possibly applicable to this. Fining someone is not different from altering their salary uh, when, when they're in Congress. It's not the same thing. It doesn't apply. It's the ultimate logical stretch. The Eighth Amendment has to do with cruel and unusual punishment, excessive fines, etc. I would argue that you can't possibly have any form of principles whatsoever if you failed to say anything about Alex Jones and many other people who have been hit with absolutely and objectively unconstitutional degrees of fine and then say that Adam Schiff who is a rich man, he's in Congress, he has a high salary, he can write a book and all of his friends over in China will buy 10 million copies so he could easily cover the fine. 16 million dollars. Hmm, that's interesting. It's a lot of money, of course, to me and you. Uh, to Adam Schiff, it's eh, still definitely a decent total. I'm sure he could find out a way to work out a payment plan to pay his dues back to the American people for wasting over $30 million and for lying to them constantly. But the GOP, because it's been uh, uh, racked with TDS sufferers, number one, partisan morons, number two, and you still have some of the we can't win, we have to lose with grace morons left, Number three, 20 Republicans decided to vote with all of the Democrats there in, in order to protect Adam Schiff. If this isn't number one evidence of the cowardliness of Republicans in general, and number two evidence of the dysfunction, the unipartyist dysfunction of an element of that party, I don't know what is. Why on earth would you not take the opportunity when you clearly have the votes just along a partisan line to attack Adam Schiff for something that a lot of people want him to be attacked for, including independent voters. He wasted their time. He lied to everyone. Why wouldn't you condemn that? You know, at the very least, will you put forth a bill that removes the fine so that Massey no longer has an excuse to vote against it? It would be interesting to see if he found, out so, found some other weaselly way to avoid doing so. I bet anything that he would. Because that's not the reason why. He's, specifically, Massey comes off as the most despicable of this slurry of Republicans here. There are some others that are real winners, but we already know how some Republicans will vote. We know uh, the unipartyist Republican is, is clearly not going to vote in favor of censoring Adam Schiff because he's part of the uniparty. In a few of these cases, though, the only thing I can explain it as is pure suffering TDS, <laughs> including in Massey's case. Link in the description. Archived, of course, this story is hilarious in a grave humor sort of way. Uh, again, the GOP can't even unfuck itself, you know, or hold rank long enough to censor Adam Schiff, of all people, one of the most antagonistic members of Congress towards your entire party. When you've got a clear-cut reason to do so, at the very least on the condemnation side, there is no constitutional argument to be made against that. Yes, Congress is, yes, the House of Representatives is capable of holding a simple vote in order to condemn a member for what they have done. It's cut and dry. Of course they have that power. There's no constitutional overreach there. Okay, so you remove the fine and Adam Schiff effectively skates and you're giving him a strongly worded letter. Will you even do that? Is the GOP capable of it? 
We shall see. Probably not, though. Now that you've self-owned, you're also going to ensure that Adam Schiff prevails in his political district. So, you know, congratulations, you've re-secured his position. This looks mysteriously an awful lot like some of the lead-ups to the midterm elections in 2022, where members of the GOP self-sabotaged or sabotaged one another, notably Mitch McConnell sabotaging multiple races. Like, uh, hmm, the one in Alaska that the GOP literally could not lose. But he threw $10 million at that race while letting uh, people like J.D. Vance starve. You know, uh, you know some, of the, some of these people did get screwed. Blake Masters did exist, you know. For what little it's worth, so did Mehmet Oz. Although, eh, who cares? Least Fetterman's been entertaining because he's so fucking batshit. So it's a disgraceful and despicable day. And uh, another blot on the GOP. And whenever there's a blot on the GOP, it tends to add it itself. Nobody's forcing them to be losers. You've, you do realize you control the House of Representatives. But you don't want to, you don't want to look like you're defending Big Don, mainly because there's a, an election going on. I guess they, they didn't uh, dare to vote in favor of this because it would look like they're defending Donald Trump and then people would scream bloody murder about it. The 10 Republicans that suffer TDS and aren't in a political position or a banker or something would be very, very concerned indeed. Uh, I mean, what more can you possibly say about this? It's nuts. You know, you have apparently no House leadership. Uh, McCarthy is hit or miss as far as doing his job. Now you've got people who, generally speaking, are at least reasonably sane, who have nonetheless flown the coop, like Thomas Massey, voting against censoring a man who objectively lied, and, you know, for what it's worth in the partisan sense, he is a member of the other party. Oh, wait, that's right, it's a uniparty now. So they're basically, oh, so yeah, I guess now I understand he doesn't want to vote against a member of his own political party his own political ideology. It seems like a lot of these TDS suffering Republicans would be more content to work with goddamn Bernie Sanders than to entertain the concept of populism. It's scary to them because it's actually capable of winning. It's a winning message and Republicans tend to be rather averse to doing so. If you want a winner who will take you down the wrong path, you, take, you go with a Democrat. If you want a loser who won't lead you anywhere at all and generally you know, just sort of meekly follows the Democrat, then you vote Republican. Other than the Trump populists and the libertarian fringe within the GOP, that's what the Republican Party has been now for like 30 years. Trump and a handful of others are the only ones that are actually attempting to do anything and that's why they get shit on. That's, by the way, why Trump was indicted because he actually walked the walk. Differential enforcement. Rules for thee and not for me. That's about all. Peace out.